No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Today we got Joey Fats on the motherfucking podcast. What's going on, Joey? Yo, yo, what's good, Adam and No Jumper? Joey was just uh, criticizing my uh, headphone game over here, saying that we need to step it up. <laughs> Piece of shit headphones. <laughs> uh, he is correct, though. We do. Yeah, he's completely correct. If you so, go to Guitar Center, these are the cheapest ones they got. Yeah, he got a piece of shit inbox, too. <laughs> if you're watching this and you do headphones, send them here. Yeah. yeah. Send us headphones he as, need the as whole well as hookup, t-shirts. Man. Yeah. But yeah, I got charging though. He getting too much money. Don't try to get you a quick little <laughs> sponsor one time. Hey, you're the one opening up stores around here and shit. Maybe we should talk about that first. What's up with this uh, this building that you're opening? You know, I'm trying to put you out of business. <laughs> oh, you're getting in the BMX game? Yeah. He's cutthroat just, out here. You might just grab a bike one time. Ooh, if you start selling bikes, yeah, I might feel some type of way. That's a real thing. Huh? <laughs> you know, it's personal then. Yeah, that's really personal. <laughs> nah, but uh, yeah, I got uh, this store opening up summertime and shit. Um, cut those stuff for like basically like this is like for my merch and shit. But it's right near uh, Staples Center. Yeah, across the street. Nice. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about your your younger days though. You right from uh, from Long Beach or yeah, Eastside. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what kind of kid were you? In what area did you grow up in? I was bad. Real bad. Yeah, I was bad. I robbed guys like you back in the day. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I believe you, man. Yeah, my hood. You was easy money. That's why I'm not but, in your head. Uh, yeah. Adam's like six six. You just jump a huge guy like that, bro. You seen what I showed up with? Yeah, that's true. They don't got guys. Like me around around the <laughs> nah, maybe a little bit. I definitely do. I got a friend named Josh at six seven. Yeah, yeah. But what? There's a lot of white boys with tattoos on their face. Yeah, and, from and Long Beach, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. We're by the beach, like nonetheless. Like that's why you see like black niggas skateboarding and shit a lot out there. Yeah, because like, I used to hang out at Houghton Skate Park all the time. You used yeah, to hang I'm, out there. Nah, I'm from the east side. Yeah, so, yeah. Nah, we I Cal Rec, but they didn't build a skate park when I was younger. Right. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Because I lived in Long Beach for mad long too. I was on like Gaviota and Seventh. <laughs> I used to live on Stanley and Eleventh. Yo, I lived on Stanley and Tenth for yeah, mad long too. Yeah. That place is. Fun. I remember one time. Oh, what year did you stay over there? 2010 to 2012. Oh, yeah, he was over there late. We called it Camp Stanley. If he was over there, you'd have heard a lot of gunshots. And yeah, shit. we did see. I seen some crazy shit. Like one in the same weekend, they did like a raid on a house and found fucking like a whole meth lab in there. And then the next day, a fool was leaving drunk, and he fucking a guy tried to stop him because he bumped into his girl's car, and the dude cut the fool right in half. And they had like vigils for like three days on the block, like oh, cut the guy in half. Oh, Long, Wait, like, Long Beach is lit. Beach is How do you cut someone in half? You got to saw him, right? I don't know. The car hit the guy apparently. Oh, like. A truck like going into like a van or some shit with it, like, like a samurai sword. Oh, that's know. too crazy. I, I didn't see it. I just heard about it. Yeah, it might not have been a clean incision, but fuck. that's too crazy. What about all right? So so growing up, like uh, yo, Vince is gonna whoop your ass. Man. Is he really? Nah, I'm joking. <laughs> I just can't on mine for some reason. Yeah, Vince and me were we had static on nah, Twitter for he, a second. He likes you. You're cool, man. I like him too. He's like a, a rapper I like enough that I would have been sad if he didn't like me. Nah, he's cool, man. Well, that's good. Um, well, how'd you meet Vince though? How'd you guys become friends? Well, we're cousins. Cousins. Okay. Yeah. So like yeah, I knew him his whole life. Right. Yeah, right. But he was like all over the place. Like he's one of the cousins. Like I got the strict mom. Right. Like you know what I mean. He grew up like going to, like Christian schools and shit. Uh-huh. So like he was like bad, but like every time he acted up too much, like be around us too much, like like when he got was sent to Atlanta and shit like that. So right. Just like yeah. Yeah. When did you start getting in trouble though and stuff? And when when did the when did you hop off the porch as I said? Uh, my first time in the back of a police car. I was in fifth grade. What for? Uh, I was it was for riding a bike with no helmet. <laughs> but the, the dude fuck? I was with, yeah, the dude I was with, his name was a little Crip. He was a known game banger, but we were the same age. So like, that was, was just like the excuse right that they grabbed you for. Yeah, so it was basically like whoop your child. He's hanging with the wrong like because I just showed up. They let me right out the house, like right out the car. What, and my what mom gang was little Crip in? He's been saying, <laughs> but he used to be from my hood back in the days, like when my hood first started. He used to be from my hood, but yeah, he's been saying now. Do you remember when you first started to feel like you were being exposed to the, the gang lifestyle, though? Was that just what I was, was around you from day it. one? Yeah, my brother's name started the hood in 92. I was born in 91. Right. So, you know what I mean? It was, it was like I was born into it. There's nothing more they wanted than have a little bitty brother that was the first, like, little homie from the set. Right. Like, you get what I'm saying? So. But were you, as a young kid, were you always, like, the, the young kid that could hang with the older dudes? Yeah, yeah. You, like, t- learned well? What's the, what's the trick to being in that position? Uh... Shut up and just listen. Yeah, Pay attention to a lot of shit. Soak up game. Yeah, that's, that was my problem a lot when I was young. I used to try to talk a lot. Yeah. Even though they were older than me, I used to try to run shit. Right. It wasn't happening. You think that's a big part of like any kind of success in like the rap game or anything is just knowing how to play your part and like knowing when yeah, to be the star Yeah, it's a lot of, the of fake people in this shit, bro. Like, it's like fake love. So, like, you just got to learn to separate, like, you know what I mean? Like, people you really genuinely fuck with just without the music and, you know, the rappers. You right. know what I mean? Because rappers, you know, like, I mean, they'd be cool with you when they see you in person, but they'd talk behind your back, you know what I mean? And then, like, 
Say for instance, like, oh, I fuck with Joey, but he talking to a bitch, fucking a bitch. Oh, yeah, nigga, suck her. Like, they do shit like that. Like, you always so. got to hear about some dude hating on you to a, yeah, to a girl, right? It's mostly all rappers. So yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Though. I feel like the guy policy should be like, even if a girl t- hits me up and she's like, oh, what do you think of this guy? And if I think he's a piece of shit, I'll still be like, yeah, he's all right, you know? Like, yeah. keep it low. I don't really talk about other niggas. Yeah. Like, if, if they work for me, then it's my job to critique them. But other right. than that, it's really out. Yeah. That shit's gay. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. Yo, when did you start to be, like, influenced by rap music? And, like, what were you first into? Well, shit, my mom lied to me my whole life, made me think I, Tupac was my dad. What the fuck? Yeah, until I was, like, five, I really realized that my mom was shitty and crazy. Like, so, like, she's not really crazy, but, yeah, she's just really obsessed with Tupac. Really? Yeah. Tupac is really big in my household. From day one? Yeah, from day one. What's your favorite Tupac album? Probably All Eyes On Me. Right. Whose favorite album is that not? Like, yeah. That shit's fire. That's true. That's, I like Me Against the World a lot, too, though. Me Against the World is fire. Yeah. What you know about that? That one just holds a special place for me in, like, fourth grade. Okay, I knew you had a little flavor to you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to object to that right now. But uh, what else were you listening to? And, like, what, what was, was the role uh, of music High Boys, house? Guerrilla Warfare. So you were on that, though, even though you weren't in the in the South or whatever, you still had the influence? I was a gang member. Yeah. Shit. When was, I, we was just watching Cash Money performances earlier because that was just like a clutch part of my life right like who didn't want to be bg come on (laughs) like bg was the one out of the group that you looked at though because he was the gang member you can tell yeah he was the gang members he's the heroin addict too it don't matter (laughs) you still got you got you got man you know what i mean like you know what i mean you could people do their vices yeah i mean these people in your face like coke is horrible too Coke is huge though. So, like, I don't give a, what. So that that means it's okay. Yeah. But so I'm he just go. Saying, you see so nigga shoot up heroin. heroin. Nigga like snorts with coke right now. You go be like. But you put heroin. Yo, and coke you on cool. The same level. But you tripping, <laughs> motherfucker. Like, nah, that shit's hard. You never hard done drugs. coke. Nah, bro. Never even thought about nah, it. I don't. Do any other drugs besides? Weed? I do like uh, psychedelics and shit, but I don't really. Do that you like stuff. psychedelics? Yeah, I like mushrooms a lot. Specifically mushrooms. Yeah. To, like, to create music or just to nah, chill? I just like to trip every once in a while. Get yourself yeah, outside I, of your I, I like streaked the last time I tripped. Streaked? Yeah. Where? Like by USC. Oh, what the fuck? It's like legal down there because it's a, it's a college. <laughs> uh, nah, it was like in the hood by USC. I was like tripping, but it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you think you streaked for? How long are you actually naked? I don't even remember. For? Like my girl had my gun in her purse, so she, she was cool. Right. Just in case someone came on Yeah, you. my girl was the shiz. What the fuck? That's amazing. So tell us about, uh, I don't know, like, you, you always talk about being homeless. At what point did that occur? Uh, when I was 16. 16. What yeah. happened? Uh, my mom moved out of Lone Beach uh, because, like, rent started getting, like, they gentrifying Lone Beach yeah, like yeah. a motherfucker right now. They've been gentrifying it for a minute, like, 07. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, uh, rent started getting too high and shit, so she couldn't afford it. Then all the way that, like, my brother's name was getting shot. Like, my grades was dropping crazy. So she tried to go to, like, the valley. I didn't like it, yeah, so yeah. I left the house. You couldn't handle being that far away from Long Beach? Uh, it just wasn't nothing to do. I knew I was going to go to jail. Right. Like, when you got too much idle time, like, it's just <laughs> crazy. Like, yo, I'm trying to rob something. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, that's how I was as a kid. Like, that's how I used to think. But now I'm, like, far from that shit. And all the people in the valley, like, you probably just had people ripe for consuming drugs that you could sell them, right? Valley, I didn't stay there for too long. You didn't stay there long I, Bro, it's, it, it's fucking dry. Like, I can't do that shit. Like, I'm from Long Beach. I need a beach, like, five blocks. Like, I grew up five blocks away from the beach, bro. Do you ever go to the beach? Yeah, but there's no waves there. Like, yeah. we just used to go to the park. Like, Cherry Park is really lit. Yeah, Cherry Park is where uh, Terry Kennedy did, did his first ollie. That's dope. Yeah. You know him back in the day or any of the skateboarders? Uh, he used to skate around the area, but I never, like, actually, like, right. you know, I know Terry Kennedy. But he, like... Like actually by me talking to homies like he was a regular dude. Like, yeah, he puts on for Long Beach. He's a real Long Beach though. nigga, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I respect that. He don't even get enough credit. Yeah. And like the industry in you know terms Antoine of like, Dixon? Antoine Dixon is dope as fuck, yeah. I know him. He did this podcast and he's a fucking lunatic, yeah. Yeah, he's fun, yo. Antoine <laughs> Dixon is fun. Yeah, I was just recently talking to somebody about him, like, yo, I need to start hanging with him. Yeah. He's the best because, like, anytime he's in the hood out skating or whatever, it's like he's like a real celebrity. Like everybody knows him and loves him because he's, he's so fun. Grimy. Yeah. <laughs> and he's fun, like Thing is, like, they know he can take it there, but he's just so fun, you know. He's a real positive dude. Yeah. Like, but when he's drunk, he can talk shit. But who doesn't? But, yeah, and he's drunk I mean? a lot. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it's fun though. Right, but okay. So how do we end up on that from the homelessness uh, and start when oh, you're you 16? Oh, you Terry yeah. Kennedy and shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you start. Uh, but you're riding saying, all these you skaters need, and shit. You need you know? to be by the beach and shit. <laughs> be about the beach. Yeah. Right, so you're 16. Your mom moves to the valley, and you're like, I'm staying here. Yeah, no, nah, it was. I left with her initially. Oh. I went for like a month, you know what I mean? But it just was like, I went, I started going to school, but I was a real, like, good football player. 
Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was, like, a real, like, recruited, like, big, heavily recruited football player. So when what I went position? there. Tailback is strong safety. But, like, when I went there, it was just, like, they was 0-9 the year before. It just was, like, nah, I'm not really trying to do this shit. <laughs> and then, like, it was my senior year, and I had all these scouts already scout me and shit. So I was just, like, yo, just let me do my thing for the football shit back, you know, because I had transferred schools from Long Beach, Jordan to a prep school by USC because I was, like, my GPA started dropping. And then, like, I had, like, a mentor, you know what I mean? So they transferred me schools so that my GPA, like, because they did, like, a block schedule system, you know what I mean, to where it was only four classes a semester, but it was, like, two-hour periods. It was, like, some weird accredited system, but I ended up graduating with a 3.25 GPA, you know what I'm saying? So it worked, you know what I mean, but I ended up going to jail. What for? Robbery, like, two weeks before graduation. Who'd you rob? Talk about Can't shit. talk about it. Uh, okay, uh, but yeah, but um, so you went to jail. Yeah, the case got dropped though because oh. they wasn't a, a citizen. Right, they couldn't go to court. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Damn. So yeah, but by then, like all my scholarships was out the window though. Everything. So went wait, hold on. If you're gonna rob someone, rob someone who's not a citizen. Nah, it wasn't like I wasn't like particularly looking for somebody. If he was right there, I'd have robbed you too. If like so a black nigga was there, I'd have robbed him too. It just was like. I was, I'm 17, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm my mom's first child to right. graduate high school. You know what I mean? Uh, she's, you know, poverty. Like, we, you know what I mean? We grew up in poverty, you know? She don't have money. You know what I mean? So two weeks before graduation, they tell all the kids, oh, you need 350 for a cap and gown. But, and if you don't have the cap and gown, you can't walk the stage. Oh. So you mean to tell me, I go through all this hard work of putting <laughs> all these fucking books and all this shit, and I still can't walk the stage if I don't have this fucking shiny suit on. Yeah, Mr. Virtue, you can't die. Okay, so robbed somebody, wow. and they followed me to school. I ended up having to leave school. I was on the run for like a week, and then I turned myself in. Damn, man, yeah. that's crazy. And so then, did that just signal like a change in your life from that period? On? I was already changing, like, cause you, like I said, I was in the streets since '99, so I start seeing, like, you know what I mean, like, like I'm, I'm very like open minded to a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know the streets ain't, you know, all of that's where it's at. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not. Just a one minded like, But you were able to money. do a little bit of that while you were also like going to school. And- I didn't want to, but that's what I was around. You know what I mean? I didn't have a choice. Like I'm not gonna sit here and act like the toughest nigga ever because I'm not. You dig what I'm saying? Like I just didn't have a choice, bro. You get what I'm saying? I'm one of them dudes who just they have nowhere to go, bro. You know what right. I mean? I'll be damned if I don't. I'm not about to be letting niggas pick up like beat me up and shit. So I just do I am the aggressor in most situations. Right. Yeah. You were just dropped into that environment and just had it like survive. Exactly. Like my brother just told me when he went to jail, like most niggas don't really want to fight. Most niggas don't want to die. So if you're the first person to take it there, they ain't gonna really want to do that. So just most of the time, like, it just go from zero to hundred. Do you feel like you needed to like adapt that mentality just as a way to survive and the way you were brought up, where like people yeah, were testing because, you all the time? Well, like, not necessarily because like I respect people from all walks of life. You know what I mean? A friendly person, I don't. You know what I mean? Disrespect, I mean, respect you less just because you're friendly and you're not in the streets. That's just your walk of life. You know right, what I mean? Yeah. That don't make, it don't make me more of a man because I was in the streets. You dig what I'm saying? Or, you know what I mean? So so to say, but it's just more like, uh, like I said, I was just around it, bro. That's all I had to do. You get what I'm saying? Like, right. that's all I had to protect myself. And not, like I said, my brother and him started to, so it was like more like a family thing back then. Right. But when it started branching off and getting crazy, all that shit, that's when I started looking like, you know, I got to start figuring something out. You know Did you I mean? say your brother got shot? 12 times. What, what kind of situation was that? Just like a drive-by or some shit? Or? Uh, he got shot two separate times, six times each. Damn. Yeah. So you grew up, like, knowing, like, how dangerous that kind of shit was to get involved with? Or I what? seen my brother stretched out. Like, oh my god, brother got killed when he was 14. <coughs> 14. You know what I'm saying? So I seen it early. You know what I mean? My mom is a, is a, is a real gang member. Uh-huh. Like a known gang member from Compton. Like OG Shelly Rue. She from Fruit Town Paru. You know okay. what I mean? Lutus Park. That's what it was, like, clicked up back in the day. It right. was real close, but like, yeah, she's like a real hardcore gang member. Uh-huh. She moved to Long Beach to try to get us out of that shit, but it didn't work. It didn't work. We just became Crips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. So, so after you do this little uh, stint in jail, that doesn't. Yo, my bad. My no jumper interview probably boring. I know everybody come on here trying to be the coolest nigga ever. No. <laughs> Yo, I got on Raph on no jumper. Like niggas come on here trying to do the and shit. So, you, well, let's just skip to that then. You got a problem with Rob Banks? Oh, damn, I wouldn't even talk about Rob <laughs> oh, I can boy, cut that I, out. I ain't got no problem with him. Everybody little. fucking says that they have a problem with him he's on the soft, podcast man. these days. He's soft, Like, I, I, don't, I don't have problems with little ass boys. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was a problem when he was talking on the internet shit. And then when I seen how he was in person, like, when, like, because we went to what is, because, like, 
I don't just talk, bro. You get what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. Niggas think I just talk. You know what I mean? I might mention it and just be like, you know what I mean? Like, you probably don't hear nothing about it. You probably be like, oh, he off it. But I don't never forget shit. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, so I told him, like, you can't perform in L.A. You know what I mean? And I kept my word. I went to a show in L.A. The nigga showed up, like, three hours late. He uh-huh. didn't even, like, perform on time. You know what I mean? So he, and when he, like, when he comes, he stays in the back of the venue. Like, he don't even come to the front. They call him to the stage. It's on ham on everything, buddy. Uh-huh. So uh, we there, we there five deep, no guns. We want to fight, so uh, we just there. You know what I mean? We there. I guess he get the word that yo fast is here, da da. Because it was like some big internet shit. This when I first start rapping. This is when Yams first endorsed me. All this shit. Like, you got all the fans hyping you, you know up. I mean? yeah. So yeah, so it's just like yo fast is here, da da. So I guess he heard and didn't show up. So he showed up later. The nigga is nervous, like looking like he about to throw up. Like he's sitting in the back, but he's sitting like on like a platform, but he like looking down. And he just like looking at the corner of his eye, like I wonder what he gonna do. That moment, that from that moment, I knew like, oh, he a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like he just soft, like he an internet guy. But look, this what happened. Like so, <laughs> I go walk and get my brother from the front. Like he's so nervous, he can't wait to even see what's gonna happen. He like, yo, 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 let me talk to you. I'm like, I bet. What's up? So he like, yo, come over here. Let me talk to you. You're away from everybody. I'm like, so what's up? He like, yo, yo, forget, like, forgive me for all that internet shit. You know what I mean? That's internet shit. You know what I mean? Let that little internet. I'm like, nah, bro. Like, you know, I don't want to fight. We can go around the corner and settle this. He like, nah, bro. Uh, I, my right hand of God. My right hand. My best friend. My right hand. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, he said, yo, he laughed and said, yo, you a real nigga. You know what I mean? I respect for you. Keep me aware. You coming up here saying, I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, basically trying to cop a plea. I'm just like, uh-huh. nah, bro. Like, what's up? Like, you know what I mean? Like. But me, I'm not no bully. If a nigga don't want to fight, I'm not just going to beat a nigga up, stump him out. You know what I mean? Like, I don't got no point to prove. So he was really apologetic, so I let him slide. But the nigga is so scared. His dad, Shaggy, <laughs> calls my manager at the time, phone. He calls Stretch phone. I'm like, oh, man. I said, like, me and Yams was dying at this shit, bro. So the nigga was trapped in L.A. because he was so scared, thinking he couldn't go to the airport. He missed his little sister kindergarten graduation in Jamaica or some shit. Like, it was some weird shit going on. Like, wow. I talked to his mama. I talked to his dad. They're like, yo, he's just some drug addict kid. He never struggled his whole life. Never been in no scuffle. Never did nothing. He was fortunate his whole life. That's my baby. Leave him alone. I'm like, you got my word. That's you know? what Shaggy said? I, I swear to God. I can't believe we're talking about Shaggy. That's crazy. It's Shaggy. Like, literally <laughs> Wait, Shaggy. Shaggy, it wasn't me, Shaggy. Yeah, it yeah wasn't you weren't there for that interview. Rob Banks, that's his dad. Yeah, that's his dad. Whoa! Yeah, <laughs> Roseman, Roseman's white as hell. But uh, what? So <laughs> yeah, like you go to YouTube videos, you see him dancing on stage with his dad when he was little, all type wow. of shit. Yeah, he's a fortunate nigga. Damn, that was Wait, a, okay. So the beef started because he was talking right about. He started talking about you first online. Nah, it's just like every beef I get into is never over me. No, like because I'm never out, bro. I never been to a club before. I don't see these niggas. They don't got no reason to beef with me. You dig what I'm saying? So it's really just me, like, over, like protecting my homies. You get what I'm saying? Like, how I got into it with these niggas recently. It was just really, like, for Eddie Baker. You get what I'm saying? Like, Eddie Baker is, like, my bro. Like, when I first started rapping, he was, like, one of the first people to come. Like, you know, like, yo, let me shoot videos. Let me help you whatever you want to help with. Like, you need help with. He was a rapper himself. But he just fucked with me so much. Like, he was helping me with anything I needed help with. So I respected him. You get what I'm saying? So me and Eddie Baker had our differences. You get what I'm saying? Years passed. And we did our own thing. But but at the same time, that love is there. You get what I'm saying? I'm not going to let no nigga bust him over the head with a bottle. And that's disrespectful. So when that scene out, it's just like, okay, when you come to L.A., it's going to be a lot worse. You get what I'm saying? But, you know what I mean? They called in. They they tapped in, basically said they don't want no problems. You know what I mean? Him and Eddie Baker can shoot their head up face. So when they come to L.A., that's what we're going to usher. You know what I mean? I'm going to let Eddie little whoop his little bitch ass. Yeah, I mean, we're going to leave it at that. You and Eddie could be like a wrestling tag team. <laughs> no, nah, I don't wrestle. I don't no. wrestle. He's not trying to grapple with another man. Adam. God damn, nah. this got serious real quick. Uh, no, nah, you, you ask Eddie about me, man. Eddie, yeah. Eddie will tell you about me. Okay. Yeah, real official. Eddie been, like, been in my hood, all that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Damn. We got to go back because we got to figure out how you ended up meeting Yams and how you got started in the rap game so before we do all the beefs. Because <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's at least a couple others that I screenshotted on Twitter that I to bring <laughs> up. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. then that is like you hear him. It's like listening to fucking Donald Trump. Like he's just telling you like why you should not like somebody, and you're just like transfixed. Like that was pretty nah, like, man, that was like powerful. Like, like I said at the end of the day, man. Like I fuck with bro music. Like you mm-hmm. get what I'm saying. Like I told him that when I first got into it with him on tour, your music is dope. You get what I'm saying. But you a bitch. 
Like I like I said, I respect niggas from all walk of life. You ain't gotta be tough. You ain't gotta say that you walk around with these clips. You ain't gotta say you go kill a nigga mama on Twitter, all this extra shit with that too. You say all type of weird shit about my brothers. Like it ain't about me, about Rocky and them. You get what I'm saying? Like I said, those are my brothers. Like I don't do that just because Rocky in that position. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like before Rocky was on tour with, with Rihanna, you know what I mean? He was already big, but nowhere as big as he was now. I was riding for cuz. Right. You know what I mean? Like for Yams, you know what everybody think Yams is just the weed man for ASAP or some weird shit. I was right. People think cut. that they thought all type of weird shit, bro. They didn't know what Yams did. Like yeah. when he when That's he first funny. got on, I never took it. Yams as the weed man. Yeah, they 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 thought he was all type of weird shit. Twitter dudes are always like saying shit that like you can't take back. You know, like when they get in the argument, like saying something about your mom or like this this fool told me like suck my dick the other day, and I'm just like, bro, like now nah, we can't even like we're supposed to be cool before that. I'm like, we can't even really be friends now if you're gonna say something fucked up like that. Like, yeah, like I like it's it's a it's a level of respect. Like if you're not the homie, homie, yeah. you can't say something shit like if you we joking and you're not my homie you can't call me a bitch i probably slap the fuck out of you right like you get what i'm saying like just certain shit like suck my dick probably won't flow with me well neither. yeah see that's very Adam, who, we were talking to jay stash and someone went to someone's mom's house he was saying that rob banks pulled up outside his mom's house with a bunch of people looking for him and that's what he got so mad about yeah yeah which that that isn't even out yet, so we don't know what the like, heck this shit is all just gonna be Twitter. A lot explosion. of moms yeah. coming into the oh, equation. Damn. Leave the moms alone. Yeah, I got God Jay damn. Stash be ready to come on shit. Yeah, yeah and he talked lit. about Rob a lot too, so that was that was interesting. Rob and me are cool, but apparently his friends really, really don't like me, so you don't need to be hanging with that fuck boy. You don't need to be cool with that fuck boy. <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's a good guy. I like his music too. He's a good man, rapper. let me stop talking about it. You can be cool with whoever you want to be cool with, man. <laughs> all right, I appreciate it. Um but yo. So uh, I want to know, like, how you actually got your start in terms of rapping and stuff. Man, uh, when I got out of jail, you know what I mean, like, with high school, it was just my mind was going everywhere, you know what I mean? Like, because mm-hmm. it just was like, I knew, like, uh, school, like, that's when, like, when I was uh, graduating high school, that's when I was doing all the reviews on college and shit, like, is it really worth it? You know what I mean? Shit, I was doing a lot of research, and I'm like, you know, like, 75, 80% of the people that graduate say that it ain't even worth it, you know what I mean? They're in debt. Right. I'm saying it's just really an experience, so just, like, I knew I didn't want to go to school. I knew I didn't want to be, like, a doctor or a teacher or something that required, you know, a degree or education. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. But that was the overall goal. You just weren't sure what you wanted to do. Uh, it's like, I don't, I don't want to rap now, bro. Like, I don't, who wants to be a rapper? You really feel like that? Yeah, I don't want to rap, bro. I feel like most kids who want to rap would be rapping for free. Like, they would do this just because they want to be that type of dude, you know? Nah, you got to think about rappers with characters. Uh-huh. They looked at it as little made up images and all this shit, like a little character on stage dancing. Yeah. That's not me. Don't play with me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not me. Like, uh, so it's just like, you rappers are known to lie a lot. I don't like to be looked at as a liar. Like, I'm not sitting here lying to you. Like, but that's what most people like think when they hear about a rapper, you get what I'm saying? Right. It's just like, I look up to people like Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, people like that, you get what I'm saying? Like, people who really, you know what I mean, changed the world, you know, environmentally, you know what I mean, and did something for the people. Like, I know I probably talk like, you know what I mean, simple-minded, closed-minded, gang-banging, stupid shit. Well, now you just switch into that yeah, mode a little big bit picture. once in a while. Very, I'm, I'm very educated, bro. I just don't talk a lot. Right. Yeah, I'm very educated. That's but, how I learned. But, okay, so you decided you didn't want to go to college, and then, like, how did you end up, what directions did you try? I just, like, I like music. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, in 09, everybody was rapping in L.A. Right. Every fucking body, especially Long Beach, everybody fucking rapping. So who didn't pick up a mic and try? And just so happened, I made a good song. Uh-huh. Um... I made uh, Filthy Facts is my first song. It was over Pretty Flocko remix. Okay. And uh, I went from like 700 followers on Twitter to like 6,500 by the end of the week. Really? Because I was in the streets. So like I didn't know how to use Twitter. I didn't really know how to use no phone like that. I was just used to sidekicks really. When sidekicks went out of style, I was kind of hot. So like this whole iPhone shit started coming around Twitter, all that shit. So I was like kind of out the loop. So I had an egg as my icon. Oh, no. <laughs> so you weren't one like, of them. <laughs> yeah. So it was like on some majestic weekend shit. You get what I'm saying? Like people were just like, oh, who the fuck is this? Oh, you're mysterious yeah, on like, accident. Yeah, like Vince is fucking with me. Vince Staples is just like, who is this guy? Like, you know what I mean? Like everybody fuck with him. Like um, they see me taking pictures with everybody. Like, you know what I'm saying? So everybody just wondering. You know what I'm saying? Who's this guy? But on my Twitter, they just see an egg. But you go to everybody's profile, you see me post it on Instagram. Or doing That's something. kind of brilliant. Yeah. So, like, it, like, really, like, helped me out at the end of the day. Uh, and then I dropped a cutthroat video. Then uh-huh. it just went, like, viral. It was, like, I don't, I don't remember. It was, like, I think, like, 50,000 overnight or some shit. That was pretty big for me. You yeah. get what I'm saying? To be a nobody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, dropped that. And then, like, Vince called me, like, <laughs> the same night. and just was like, yo, bro. 
you need to drop a mixtape. Like my first mixtape, uh, Chipper Jones, uh, Volume One mm -hmm. uh, EP. It wasn't even supposed to be like that, but that was just the songs I had right then at that time. Like right. you know what I mean, because I wasn't rapping full time. I didn't take it serious. It just that song went kind of viral. You know what I mean? It just like, started catching attention. I guess certain people called him. You know, like hip hop from Def Jam wanted to sign us. Like it was like a lot of like it was like a like a bidding war when we first but came so on the scene. You started rapping after Vince was already rapping, or yeah, Vince was already rapping. Okay. Like I was like the guy that I was just watching. Like I like I just used to watch Vince because you know Vince I mean? was like a reluctant rapper too. Like he didn't want to do it. Yeah, and like Mac I used Miller to like when, it, right? when, nah, nah, Vince was already into it. Like he oh, was God. into it. But he was into it. Like when Mac Miller, I could say when Mac Miller started like really fucking with me, start like really like saying like, okay, like we actually probably can make money off this shit. You know right. what I mean? Like that's where his mind started going there. Before then, it was, it wasn't there. Like, uh, but yeah, uh, I remember going to Vince's like first couple shows. Like you know, he had a show at McWorld on like uh, Jefferson. Yeah, there's Jefferson and La Brea. They closed it down now though, but he sold it out. You know what I mean, it was a dope show. He crowd surfed. And I'm just like, damn. Like they praising him, you know what I mean? Like this is dope, and this is when Shine Cold Chain Volume One is out. He have no videos on the air, and then nobody know what this kid look like really. That's crazy. Man. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, damn. Yeah. You know what I mean, it just like, see, like from a perspective now, like with Instagram and World Star, that shit now it's like you understand it now. Mm -hmm. But before then, like you know what I mean? Like oh, like like 2012, 2011, like that shit wasn't as like popular as it is now. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we didn't really understand how the viral shit really worked. Like right. it just was like, yo, like how is he big? Like you know what I mean I didn't really understand The internet and shit like that But he proved it When the people showed up And I just was like Damn like What you doing Is actually working And that's when like I can honestly say That motivated him too Like we spent a lot of weeks Together after that Just really like planning And just talking about What it could be You know what I mean That's how Cutthroat shit Came about Right You know what I mean So How'd you guys end up With the name Cutthroat Oh uh, well Cutthroat was a division from my hood back in the day when okay. I started game banging in '99. You know I mean, like 2003, my brother and used to call themselves the Cutthroat Boys. Okay. You know what I mean? So that's where it really came from. I just wanted to like take it back and really bring something back, like something that really like hit home for like the squad. Right. So yeah. then how'd you guys get in contact with Yams? Or were you making moves before Yams well, came into the like, picture? Like. <laughs> Vince is like mad connected, bro. Like I'm, I'm telling you, like I remember going to Frank Ocean House, like when he dropped Channel Orange, like. How did uh, Vince know all these people? He's bro, just good. Vin, he good just networking? everybody knew Vince was the greatest rapper. Like everybody knew that even before he dropped the mixtape, everybody knew like, yo, this kid is it. You know what I mean? Like so everybody, and not only that, like he's funny. Like yeah, Vince is real funny. Like he talks like Vince is like a, a big ass kid. Like he talks a lot, always jumping around. Like Vince is here, he'd be on a Red Bull or something, like joking. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, he don't do no drugs. He just real energetic. Bro, like he a good soul, so everybody liked to be around him. Yeah, you know I mean, I remember going with him to sit the kid house. You know what I mean? Recording records with him up and sit like in the other room and shit like that. Like, like he was he like been around the right people. You know what I mean? It just was like because everybody believed in him. But right. the fact that he was so nonchalant about his talent, I think that's what got him to where he is because it just was like he seen like like he, not he seen but like. He thought like you know like like life is much bigger than you know music or right. rap so to say just how I think like who wants to be a rapper you know uh -huh. what I mean that's how he was thinking you know what I mean like that's crazy that so many people had faith in him because you feel like in the industry so many people are scared to give somebody a chance but he's a dude who was like so clearly talented that he had like a lot of famous people kind of on his tip. Before yeah, it they was, needed to be. Yeah, and not only that, it was like more of like a mentor thing too, because they knew he was like in the verge of getting lost in the streets, like because oh, okay. Vince was in the streets growing up, but he started like when he started rapping, he really started diving in the streets because he started really like, like, I don't know, like I wouldn't say like I don't know, like depression maybe or just like self issues. I don't know. You know what I mean? He just felt like that's where he wanted to be at the time. So just for like two years straight, he was just going hard in the streets, doing his thing. You get what I'm saying? So. When you started really going hard with the music, though, what was uh, what was your influence and like what 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 were you learning about I music as Rocky. you were going? I liked Rocky a lot. That Rocky, was the funny okay. thing about it. Like when I started rapping, that's what like when I seen Rocky get on, that's what really made me start rapping. Uh -huh. Because like I used to, I used to tell my mom like, yo, he looked like little boy too, which is like my oldest brother. Like he looked like my oldest brother. I was like, damn, like it is like, you know what I mean, niggas that look like us getting on, you get what I'm saying, regular <laughs> yeah, niggas, yeah. like you get what I'm saying, like I always thought it was like a gimmick, you got to snap, crackle, and pop to get on, some shit like that, you get what I'm saying, so when Rocky got on, you know what I mean, it was different, it wasn't New Yorkish, you know what I mean, it was an image, you get what I'm saying, but it was real good music at the end of the day, and I liked it, it was like, it was a, it was like Bone Thugs, it was like, it was hard, like, uh, like melodic, you know, right. harmony, it was real, it was real good, you know what I mean, I liked it a lot, so. That's why my first song was Pretty Flacco remix. And 
God worked this way, and then I ended up being, you know what I mean, mentored by him and Ams, you know what I mean, four months into me doing music, like, probably like my third song I dropped. But so that was through Vince, but how did they get in touch? But, I, like, it was through Vince, but, like, <laughs> it was, like, Vince, I remember one time, this, I'm not sure, but I think this is how, yeah, it was found out about me. We had a uh, Bieber King house one day, which is uh, um, Vince's DJ. We had his house in Beverly Hills or wherever the fuck he had, some nice ass place. Um, like we just chilling and shit, and then Yams calls him, and then uh, Yams they just talking about regular shit, cause Yams wanted Yams wanted Vince, uh-huh. Yams wanted to sign Vince bad, like bad. He loved Vince. Yams loved Vince music, loved it to death. Yeah, I mean, but Vince is always like, I'm gonna do my own thing. He's always been that guy. He always wanted to find out shit for himself. So, um, so we uh we at Bieber King house and. You all right? Yeah, bust your face. Watch out with them so jams had, over there. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so we <laughs> had Bieber like King House. <laughs> we had Bieber King House and shit. And then Yams just called, called him, and they talked on the phone, joking and shit. And then Yams mentioned me. And then Vince is like, yeah, that's my cousin. And then Yams is like super excited. Like, I mean, damn. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, I got some shit. So Yams is like really, his ears open. So like from then, like oh, two weeks later, I dropped a record. I think it was... Uh, 187 or yeah some shit like that I produce or it was like he liked my producing too he would just like follow me over there and I produced some shit for like Vince and Aston and I did the hook or whatever and he heard it he followed me he DM me like yo like uh I'll be out to LA in a week yo I'm trying to manage you I'm like oh where he like yeah take that my number we text yeah I mean he flew out a week later and the rest is history he moved me into Rocky House and I just was working for like three years four years straight really three or four years straight yeah like I was in an incubator for like a year, like you what know do you what I mean. mean by incubator, it was just like that was the sole focus. Yeah, I was just working with Rocky, like mm-hmm. uh, finding like I like I didn't know what it really was back then, but now since I'm like really like mastering what I'm doing, it's just like like being with Rocky. Like I think Yam's really trying to help me find my style because that's one thing that they said I like that. Like I was just real monotone, uh-huh. just real straightforward. Like because I'm real funny, like I joke a lot. They say I don't show my sense of humor enough, like in my music or in real life. Right. You know what I mean? Like or like you know when I, if I don't know people in the room, I'm just a stale nigga. Like I'm just like real quiet. They right. say like you know show your personality. Like they'll just bring me out my box more and like. Yeah, that's how you grew up, just observing. Yeah, so. that's how. Yeah, so it's just I was just real quiet. So, like. uh and being around them, like, it was just really, like, developing me as an artist. Like, Rocky really fucked with me OD, you know what I mean? I was a hard worker. He uh-huh. didn't ask for much. I'm talking about 17-hour studio sessions on Adderall with him. Really? You know what I mean? I asked him for nothing. We just smoking blunts on Adderall, right. doing mad music, and he loved it, you know what I mean? Um, and, like, I, like, and another thing was really, like, they were, was big on was how much I respected them. Right. Not because of who they was, but just as men, you get what I'm saying? Like, I, if you're my bro, I ride for you, dig what I'm saying? That's just how I've been. Yeah. Like, that's how I do with my niggas. Like, like, you see me doing that for Eddie Baker, you know what I mean? Like, Eddie Baker is, like, not big as me. Like, in music, I'm not trying to compare here, but, like, it's just, like, I just ride for my bros, you get what I'm saying? Like, period, point blank, you know, you right. know what I mean? So, it's just like that, like, so... So what? How much of that time that you were spending in the studio and the incubator stage or whatever was making beats versus, you know, using your voice? Because you always been making beats too, right? Rocky didn't like my rapping. Like I said, I was real monotone, so he was like. So he was more a fan of you just as a producer. Nah, you like my like he liked my lyrics, but he didn't like my like so I'm saying like my style, like my rapping style. He just like man, you monotone, like you greater, like you go be like you go be great, bro. But you just need to really believe in yourself. Okay. That's why he's always telling me like you gonna be great, like you gonna be great, like he still tell me that to this day, like bro. Are you gonna be one of the pioneers of the West Coast? Like I'm one of the few niggas that you can just give a laptop to a MacBook and go lock myself in a room and come out with a full song. Uh-huh. Like made the beat, mix and master it myself, everything. Like you get what I'm saying? Like, and he fuck with it. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm a hard worker. Like I was, <laughs> I'd be talking to Rocky about like being his engineer, doing just doing regular shit. You know what I mean? Cut costs. That's just how the type of dude I am. Yeah. Uh, but just n- normal, just regular shit. Like any type of way, I try to n- let niggas save money. I work for free because I'm always for learning. Yeah. I don't know Rocky is going to these places, working with these musicians in these live rooms. You know what I mean? I can learn different instruments and do all this shit. So I will benefit from it outside of money that I can go make my own money. You get what I'm saying? I never asked him for money. You know. What 
I was going to say, were you on salary when they had you in that three, four years? Nah, because like I said, I, like, I, I was always a go-getter. You get what I'm saying? Yams knew I was fucked up. You know what I mean? That's why me and him was so close, because I never had to ask him for nothing. He used to just give me the, like, his card and just be like, yo, if you need to use it, just use it, bro. Knew his pen, knew all his legal information, every fucking thing. Like, he told me everything. Like, so the fact, like, to the point, he told me everything to the point to where if he wasn't in my face, even if I didn't have his card, I could have probably went to a bank and got some cash out if I really needed it. Like, that's just how the type of duty was. And I was working too. You know what I mean? I was working in the stock room at Forever 21 at the Beverly Center. So. Oh, shit. All right. Yeah. Nights or? Uh, days. Okay. I don't think, I don't remember no nights. No, I don't think who I was, did nights. Who, did you, who was stealing clothes from the retail store they worked at? Was that also Jay Stash? Uh, oh, no. fuck. 40 ounce van. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was saying he worked at, fuck, what was it? Banana uh, Republic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And he said that they were like, nah, I ain't clothes. stealing no Forever 21 clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was only, girl, that maybe. Was only, nah. <laughs> she, I ain't get her that. No, you can't do that. Well, either, just, yeah. uh, I guess that's, that's an insult yeah, right there. That's like buying your girl Michael Kors watch. That's like, I don't really like you that much. Yeah. I don't love you, bitch. <laughs> For Yo, the side, side, side piece, you're yeah, Forever 21. Get it. <laughs> they got Forever yeah. 21 dudes clothes, too. I can see you rocking some of that. No, it's not called You definitely look like a Forever dudes. 21 dad. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, because I never realized how cheap that place was. I was on vacation. I needed Man, socks. I wish I would see you in some fucking Forever 21. <laughs> I still got the socks. It was like, oh, you're it was crazy tripping. cheap. It was like eight bucks for like eight pairs of you socks. Know, you right like, downtown, bro. You might as well no, I was on vacation. Shit. I was in like Florida in the middle of nowhere. Okay. That's my excuse. <laughs> so, to like, so the kids coming up, you would say like working for free is smart. I mean, like oh, going, not finding, finding a mentor. Working for free is not, it's not necessarily working for free, but work where you see a future. Like work for, like it ain't always, always working for money. Like you got, you got to stay down to come up. So to say, I don't want to sound cliche, but like, like I'm pretty sure all some shit didn't just start overnight. You know what I mean? Nah. Like niggas, it was like you know slaving hard days and doing what they had to do. You get what I'm saying? To do you know what I mean? Get it to where it's at. You That's get what why I'm people are so thirsty for internships and shit because the people are dying to work for free. Like if you are looking at the kind of jobs being in entertainment, working with music or artists or anything like that, like those are the types of jobs that everybody wants to do that shit for free. So you got to really show that you're talented if you want anybody to give you a chance, yeah. you know? It's not even necessarily showing you talented, just really showing that you're work really ethic. W- willing to work, willing to learn, you get what I'm saying? And just cool dude. Yeah. Like like I said, if you like nobody wants to see an asshole win. If you just got this little kid who just quiet, like anything you need me to do, I'm here. That's was, gonna be the dude you go roll with. Was Yams the hardest working guy you've met? Yeah, man. Like he's like not only that, he slept a lot too, but <laughs> the hours he was woke, he got every like he outworked anybody I knew. Sleep's very important for rest. And yeah, he stress was like, relief. He's a sleepaholic. He's yeah. asleep a lot. Like he sleep like days at a time. What was that? What was the impact that he had on you? Because I mean, everybody who was around him's got stories about the influence that he had. What, what, what stands out to you? Uh, that's where I got my whole swag from. From where I dress, how I walk, how I talk, how I move, everything. Uh-huh. It's from him. Like he, uh, I was so like thirsty for like. Uh, a male like figure to look up to because mm-hmm. like, I didn't grow up in a house with my dad and shit right. so like having him around it was like somebody I could finally like idolize like even though like he wasn't shit to a lot of people what did he do you know what I mean like even if he didn't do shit for Rocky and him just how he was bro like you had to meet him to really understand him like his whole like the way he moved, just just love and it's funny, bro. Like you know what I mean, he's just hilarious. I remember us being at the uh, <laughs> after the Grammys. <laughs> it was like the Grammys like two years ago. We go to Greystone, <laughs> so we go to Greystone. We catch an Uber there. So like he like a little kid too. Like he get the uh, we. I'm talking about we literally walk a distance, not even 200 yards away from Greystone. But he like man, we about to get his S550 Uber pull up style. So. <laughs> Like, but he joking, he laughing, but he's serious. He's just like, you know, like nigga shit. Like, yeah, we about to do the damn thing. Like, you know what I mean? Yo, that's like, smart as fuck right there. Yeah. Like, we laughing and shit. Like, he like, hell yeah. So no, we- I pulled that move. Got the Uber X close to the club. Yeah. And then upgrade to the premium right near the club. Oh, yeah, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fake. Amazing, I'm real yeah. fake. Yeah, but like, we was trying to stun so hard. Like, when we, when we pulled up, nobody was outside. So we circled the block. Everybody had to see the S550. <laughs> like, me, him, and 12, we were in the car. So Yams, like he drunk as fuck. Like we laughing, we having a good time. Like that's why we went out. Like we didn't wasn't really paying attention to the Grammys. That's not why we went to Greystone. And we were just up late. I never been to a club. We talking about clubs. They like Greystone around the corner. Like this shit popping right now. Da, da, da. So we ended up going. And I think the nigga named Luke James. I think that's his name. He's a singer. Uh-huh. Yams walks up to the nigga like, excuse me, sir. 
do you work at this fine establishment? I'm trying to get admitted into here. <laughs> he said, man, I'm Luke James. I was nominated for a Grammy. Uh, 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 I was nominated for a Grammy tonight. Yeah, I'm saying, oh, my bad. <laughs> I'm going to come clean, my bad. Like, we started dying, man. 12 years, we just started dying. Like, bro, this nigga is just off the rocker, bro. Like, it, like those are just times I miss. Like, nigga's just hilarious, bro. Yeah. Hilarious, bro. If he was here right now, like, we'd be cracking up on his podcast. Right. Like, he was, like, really, like, the animation to me like to the Joey Fats he was like you know I mean what was your relationship like like in the months before he ended up passing uh I never really talk about this with anybody but uh I started fucking with Waka in like August right like July yeah I'm starting like getting like faded and like I don't like I was always the one like, yo, you gotta chill out. You know what I mean? Like shit getting too bad. Like it wasn't like it wasn't like nothing out the norm. Like he wouldn't have seizures or nothing like that. But like he'd just be like faded. You know what I mean? Like too faded. Like not nothing like throwing up or nothing. He'd just be faded. You know what I mean? And just knowing the type of figure who he is, I just he'd be like, Yo, bro, you gotta chill out, you know what I mean? Sometimes you can't be on the Molly. Like this is this he didn't do Molly recently, but when I first met him, he, you can't be on the Molly, you know what I mean? You can't be doing lean. You got shit to take care of. You know what I mean? Nothing too crazy. You get what I'm saying? But it was to the point to where like we was in doing it for like two to three years, I think. We was doing music together. And uh and like the contract that we had together, it wasn't really like a contract but like an agreement. It was like if I don't get you a deal in a year like, you can go. I didn't want to go. You know what I mean? I was with him for two years. I was happy where I was at. You know what I mean? But, like I said, I was still homeless, though. So, at the same time, I used to just get on him. Like, yo, I need some shit going. You know what I mean? Like, Rocky, like, um, had to do some shit at his house. I think his mom and him was in town. So, I was only able to stay there, like, a couple weeks. So, I was, like, homeless, sleeping in my car again. And this time, I got songs out with Danny Brown, Rocky. Right. I'm homeless. You know what I mean? So... I'm just saying, like, yo, bro, like, shit got to change, bro. You got like, to stop getting faded. If you not stop getting faded, I'm not going to be fucking with you no more. Da, da, da. Like, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Just the normal shit. Just yeah. really trying to motivate him. I mean, to really take what we had serious. He did, though, but, you know what I mean? I just felt like it could have been a lot more serious. But uh, I remember it was uh, after they shot the Hello Hose video in Atlanta. He called me on the plane, and he was faded. And I argued with him, like, yo, why the fuck you faded? Like, but he argued, like, he called me to cuss me out, like, to tell me I'm not working hard enough. And, uh, but when he was telling me that, you know what I mean, instead of me just being quiet and just really understanding, like, he did have a valid point, you know what I mean? It probably wasn't, I ain't working hard enough, but I ain't giving you quality shit like you want. Uh -huh. I was a bitch, and... I went to, like, yo, bro, you faded right now? You know what I mean? Like, basically picked a fight. He argued while he was on the plane. Uh, he ended up, something ended up happening on the plane tour, something he was embarrassed about. I don't remember, but he was embarrassed about it. We talked, like, a couple of days after that, but I was like, yo, I love you, you my brother. But I'm going to go try to get a deal, you know, my own. Uh, man walking him. Like a month later Just months. coincidentally Yeah Everybody was like Praying on me bro Like As soon as I said Like I'm independent Like niggas was diving In my DMs Like from Malik Rashid At Epic Like everybody bro Like I I got like Deals on the table I was turning down all day Cause like That's not what Yams Had in his mind Like he wanted to do Yamborghini Records That's what we was doing You get what I'm saying That's what I'm still doing He just felt like He wasn't moving forward with That fast enough Yeah It was just like It wasn't even It wasn't him It was just like he had so much on his plate, bro, and me being selfish. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not really understanding. So. But at the same time, you're a man. You got to fucking stand nah, up for man. yourself. You, nah. you should you regret that. I was good, bro. I was good. Okay. I was good. So you go do this thing with Walker. What's that like? What's that conversation like when you meet with him? Oh, it's easy money. I fly to South America, meet him for the first time. He flew me to South America, big high on, like, high on me. You going to be the reason I retire from rap. Like, you great. Da, da, da. I mean, everything was good. I mean, following week, had a crib in Laguna Beach. Everything was going good. Got a 55 carat chain worth $45,000. I mean, everything I could possibly want, but my bro. So, 
Shit was good, you know what I mean? But I got this house in Laguna Beach, and my dream was always to live with Yams and work out the house and do this shit, so. But when uh, you told Yams you're leaving, like, he took it bad. Like, he didn't want to talk? In a way, I think that's why, like. Me and Yams never talked about, like, how much we've been to each other. But in a way, like. I just feel like if I was around, I would have been the one to really. Because, like, a week before he passed, that's when, like, if you look at his tweets, like, he tweeted me, it was like, we back rocking. He tweeted me, like, me and Joey Fast back. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, Ill Street Blues is the first project. Like, we were supposed to be, I started working on that as soon as we got off the phone with each other. Um, he wanted me to produce my own shit, so that's why I produced the whole project. And he was telling me, like, yo, I'm going to be in L.A. in a week. You know what I mean? We back rocking. We be in the studio. I mean, Rocky need these beats for his new album, da da da. A few days later, he passed away. Uh, it was like, uh, I felt that, like, the summer or, like, the months I stepped away was when he really lost his soul. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody, everybody is man. Everybody got their own life. Rocky got shit to do. You know what I mean? Like, he love, he love Yams to death. You know what I mean? That's his, his brother. Like, everybody love Yams. But everybody got shit to do. You know what I mean? To keep the company going. You know what I mean? Rocky can't be around Yams all the time. You get what I'm saying? And so forth. You know what I'm saying? So everybody couldn't, you know what I mean? Really, like, be the mental support he needed. You know what I mean? Like, Yams is like, like, unhappy, but happy at the same time. He knew shit can be greater. Like, he was like me. So, like, he was real unhappy. But happy at the same time. Um, he wasn't satisfied with, like, where he was at. Exactly. He wanted to keep going. Exactly. And that's what he did. He kept going, and he's still going right now. But it just was like, uh, he needed me, I think. You know what I mean? If I was there, I know for sure my bro would still be alive. Where, where, where were you when you found out? I was in the studio. Uh huh. And who told you you got a phone call? My girlfriend. And I was asleep. I was asleep. I found out, like, 6 in the morning. And knocked the wind out of me. It was like I got hit by a truck or something. Because um, uh, when I was 17, when I had, because like a similar situation happened to me. My, my first best friend, I got him tied up here, his name DJ. Um, when I had moved to the valley, I was talking to him like, yo, you need to get out of the streets. You know what I mean? Like, he was like more lost than me. But I was like, started studying Farrakhan and started studying all this shit, you know what I mean? And reading up on like Ellen Musk and all these people. Like, I've been on Ellen before, like, Tesla was big, like, uh-huh. you know what I mean? So, like, I'm just reading and getting all this information. I'm just trying to put him up on game. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't on the same level as me. So I didn't talk to him for some weeks. And all those weeks he passed away. Right. So it was just like, reason I don't talk about it is because like it makes me emotional at the same time because it's just like I ain't learned my lesson you know right. what I mean like oh you're putting a lot of stuff on your own shoulders yeah 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 at the same time though but it's just like that shit real dear to me bro like yeah. you know what I mean like I don't yeah. really you know what I mean like that nigga meant a lot to me bro like both of them you know what I mean like my brother like my brother boy he'd be telling me like yo why don't you talk about DJ and your music I'm just like because I won't be able to make a rap I start crying like Is it hard for you though? Because I, I assume that there's not a lot of things that could really get through to you emotionally like that, and those are two of them. My niggas mean everything to me, bro. Simple as that. Yeah. Oh my niggas. Where's he one up, bro? From Max O Green to everybody. Because my niggas like been in situations with them niggas, you know what I mean? So I ride to the death with them niggas, bro. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't even supposed to be talking on this subject. But that's why I ain't want to talk about that shit, man. Yeah. But yeah, that shit mean a lot. They ain't mean a lot to me, bro. Right. Yeah. So was it, is it hard for you to continue to do like the music thing, given the fact that you don't have games with you? And yeah, that's why I had to drop shit for a year. You took a whole year off. All right. Whole year. I was depressed. Um, I came into the game with him. Like I told you, I was doing music for four months, and uh, he came. Like he came and started fuck with me. I was doing music for four months. You know what I mean? So. I basically was ushering to the game by him. Like, yeah, he was and, there yeah, meeting you know the whole I mean? time. So he was yeah. the one, like, when I created a song in the studio, he was the one be like, yo, that shit weak, or that shit hot, or 
change them lines. You know what I mean? He was the one to do that. So for me to turn around and not see him more, to not be able to text his phone, like, yo, check your emails to track in there. It was right. like, I didn't know what. I didn't know what type of music I really made. I didn't know what the fans wanted for me because he was my fan. Like, he was my biggest fan. Like, yo, bro, that shit hot. Like, you the greatest. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Right. But the, it wasn't just you. There's a lot of other dudes, like, a lot of dudes who probably felt the same way. Who Like, they learned their style from Yams. They learned how to make put a song together. Everybody that felt shit. that way, man. He was a style god. Like, man, like, he brought the best out of niggas, man. Right. Just how he was. Like, he made the whole people. Mob. Yeah, he just made people believe they are. They, they is who they thought they was. You know what I mean? Like, Rocky thought he was just this fashion god. He made Rocky think that and so forth. You know what I mean? Like, because you is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like just how I'm telling you, like, my niggas mean everything to me. I learned that from him. You know what I mean? Like, I seen him go flat broke for his niggas. You get what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't doing... I never did nothing like that for my niggas, but I started doing it then. Right. I started seeing what the value of family was. You get what I'm saying? That, like... Because Yam's, like, he got family, but a lot of his family is extended family, like, friends and shit like that. You know what I mean? But it's just because, like, the love he got and them niggas ride for him. So it's just, like, I started learning that from him. You get what I'm saying? That's why... I got start riding for so many people who meant a lot to for me. That's why you see like, oh, what's up with this beef on Twitter? What's up with this beef? But it's really just like, really over all my homies. Like I see a nigga talking shit about my homie and just like, okay, I know I whooped this nigga ass. I got you. Don't worry about it. You uh -huh. know what I mean? like, that's what it is. But so once you start making music again, what was it that changed in your mentality? Like, did you have to at some point just say like, all right, fuck it, I'm gonna do this even though my boy ain't around anymore? Uh, it just yeah, it wasn't that. It was just more like. If I didn't do it, he died in vain. Mm -hmm. Cause like I believe he died like trying to fulfill like everybody' dream. You know what I'm saying? So if you know what I mean, I don't do music. Why are you gone? You know what I mean? It's just like my brother passed away for nothing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's why I do music. But so, you don't you don't like to put a lot of stuff like personal stuff in your lyrics. So like yeah, because like it. yeah, like I say, I'm real emotional. Like uh, like, like not emotional. Like uh, I don't really cry a lot, but like. My niggas, like I said, they mean a lot to me, bro. Like yeah. I said, I grew up homeless, so at nights he was the only person like I had to talk to, you know what I mean? So it mean a lot, you know what I mean? Like just if you was like the only person there for me, like you would mean a lot to me, you get what I'm saying? Like yeah. Bishop, like that's my right hand man. Like people be wondering like who the fuck is this white dude you with, you get what I'm saying? But when I was out on my ass, you know what I mean, after I fucked up all my money, you get what I'm saying, off tour and all that shit, he was the one who called me, like, yo, bro, I got you. Like we gonna get it together. Like he one of the reasons why I got the story, you get what I'm saying? Like that's yeah, what's your what's your life like now? My life is great. I got an M6. I got a, I got a store. Ooh, what, what year? 2015. Oh my god, it's yeah. a fast car. So, yeah, so like yeah, everything's great, bro. Like, when did it start to turn around though? Like when did uh, when did your life start to get better rather than being my life worse? been better? That's what I'm telling you. When I was homeless, I was living the life. Right. I'm talking about in Paris, nice hotels. It's just like I wasn't live. I wasn't to the point to where I was smart enough to. Make the money in the industry yet I wasn't as wise as I was today right. You know what I mean Like I was just hip to merch You know what I mean I wasn't Like every night on on Like Just how I found you Like you know what I mean I didn't find you through Xavier Wolf and him uh -huh. Like I found you Just because I found your Twitter banner That on some shit shit, And I liked it right. And you know, remember You added me like Yo nice banner <laughs> yeah. And I was like Yo who the fuck is this guy <laughs> And I was like Oh this is shit Like yeah. that's how I found you It wasn't through nobody else Like you know what I'm saying Like I just be on Twitter and I, like, just search people, like, who people will follow or just people who I think is, you know what I mean, dope and shit. And I just hit them up. And everybody can benefit from everybody, you get what I'm saying? And that's right. how I got to where I'm at. Like, Marty, you get what I'm saying? That's my boy from St. Louis, you get what I'm saying? But he real, can, like, real good on the fashion side, real, like, fashion god in my eyes, you get what I'm saying? Like, he really do his stuff, you get what I'm saying? Like, he, in terms of, like, right-hand bro, like, this is my nigga who I talk to every day, you get what I'm saying? Like, this is my nigga now, it's my road dog, so it's just like, right. yeah. Damn. Well, uh, so so when you think, well, what's up with this mixtape that you just put out? I was just listening to it again. I listened to it when it first came out too. What uh, what what was the direction that you've been going with this project, and how do you feel when you put out a mixtape now? Man, I got uh, <laughs> I got that's not even a mixtape I wanted to put out. It just like uh, at first originally I had my album ready, because mm -hmm. like I was to the point to where I just wanted to make just like quality music, like big, like you know band sounding shit. So. Like I was like, yo, <clears throat> like uh, the project I had ready was it had currency on there, like some dope shit, singers, gospel singers, all type of shit. 
Um, right after Yoshi Blues, I was gonna drop that. You know what I mean? But like, I was just like, it was a little Uzi came out, a little Yachty came. I'm like, these motherfuckers don't want to hear no, you know, no real shit right now. Like, not saying they ain't kicking no real shit, but nobody want to sit down and listen really right now. So to say, let me take that back. Nobody really want to sit down and listen. They want to bang their heads and turn up. They're like the ADD kids. You know what I'm saying, yeah. So I'm like, okay, bet. Let me just whip up this little mixtape. I did. I call you tomorrow in two weeks. Like everything. My right hand to this guy again. I didn't write not one lyric. Everything freestyle. Everybody was in the studio with me. Everything freestyle. I did that shit in two weeks. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna put this out. It's banging enough for people to bang their heads too. Plus, it's really me still in the same sense. So that's why I put that out. But like, I got like probably like 40 songs, 30 songs I'm sitting on. I got like my new mixtape uh, that I'm about to put out in the summertime. I got Young Thug Walker on there. I got Cardi. I got a lot of people on that motherfucker, man. So you're, you're comparing yourself or saying that you know people are, are fucking with a dude like Yachty. Does that make you feel like you don't have a place because you're like rapping and talking about more serious shit or whatever? Bro, or? Everybody got their own way, man. Yeah. Like Yachty, great at what he do. You get what I'm saying? Not only that, Yachty rap circles around a lot of niggas. You get what I'm saying? That's what a lot of niggas don't understand. Like that little nigga can actually rap. That's why I listen to his shit. Right. You get what I'm saying? But. That lane that he choosing, I don't know how to describe it, you get what I'm saying? I don't want to sound disrespectful and say, like, oh, it's not really talking about nothing, because they do got shit to talk about, but it's just like the headbanging lane, I don't trap, but it's just like different. It's like bubblegum trap. That's almost. what they call it, yeah. Yeah, it's like a bubblegum trap, you know what I mean? Like, so it's a lot different than the music I'm talking about. It's like know? trap, but for it's like the Sesame Street. But this shit is like, bro, dimensions. like Lil Yachty is all I listen to right now. Oh, yeah, me too, for and sure. Like, he's dope as fuck, man. Like, and like, and I agree, he's a great kid. That day yeah, that day and night song, like, I'm having a good, no, uh, I want to, because of you, I want to stay out and lay all night and all day, just me and you. That's when I was like, okay, yeah, he going to be here for a minute. Yeah. Because he really know how to write songs. Like, I really see him, like, being like, uh, um, uh, Sway Lee. Okay. Like a but like from Atlanta, like a more turned up young version of Sway Lee. Like that's that's why I see Lil Yachty. Like he go fuck around right for Beyonce one day, shit like that. Like it, it's the living in the sky for that little dude, man. Right. You know what I mean? So he just really just gotta stay focused and doing what he's doing. How much do you uh, feel like you're like it's important for you to to be you know one of the next dudes from the West Coast because it always has been like a weird experience with the West Coast and hip hop where it'll be huge for a few years and it's not important for me yeah these niggas out here is faggots yeah. I don't really fuck with West Coast rappers like that because they don't even fuck with each other so uh -huh. like <laughs> you see I got on fucking with the East Coast dude like these niggas right here out here don't show no love to each other so it's fuck all of them I don't care so you feel like you and Vince are like in a different category yeah they don't even like a lot of people from LA don't even respect Long Beach in a sense like they think Long Beach is like a different fucking state like uh -huh. but like it's really not like you know what I mean so like yeah it's like we're in our own little realm we're in our own little world you know what I mean we're not necessarily LA or West Coast rapper we're Long Beach rappers mm -hmm. yeah so what yeah. about guys like I mean like Tyler the Creator and stuff oh like yeah that. those like that's you get what I'm saying but that's different yeah. though that's yeah. way different like he like you don't see him competing to try to be the next up West Coast that's basically what I'm saying like right. the people who's competing to try to be them niggas is basically corny as fuck like just do you and have fun bro that's what it's really about that's what's up hey I'm gonna read off uh, a couple of these tweets that I screenshotted uh, you asshole some kid said I want to know about him doing shrooms on Twitter and thinking he was drowning and then deleting the tweets. Is that true? <laughs> you thought yeah, you were drowning? That's the time when I streaked. Yeah, okay, I fried yeah, that. I well, that was my second time doing shrooms, and I fried myself live on Twitter. That's when I learned you can do shrooms and be on your phone. <laughs> well, that's on Twitter, a very yeah. true thing. Yeah, Unless, for the kids like, yeah. out there, if you're listening, let's write that one down. Yeah, yeah. it's going to Take your phone, give it to your girl, put it in the purse. Yeah, put it up. You yeah, you don't next to the gun. Sort of, I'm talking about, like, I really embarrassed myself bad. <laughs> like, niggas had pictures. I was putting pictures. I was on the floor. Bro, like covering my mouth, talking about I'm drowning. Like, they but got, they had pictures of you naked. Still to the, no, no, I was. Oh, naked. okay. Hell no, I'm not Jay Stash. Because that's what I was worried about. <laughs> the booty selfie. He explains that in his episode. Yeah, that's, but that's my nigga though. But, but yeah. yo, that that there's the danger. You know, you're running around naked. Somebody says that's Joey Fats. Boom, it's on Twitter. It's ten thousand retweets. Yeah, <laughs> we gotta be careful about that'd that. That'd be cool. I'm not, I'm not short nowhere, so it'd be alright with that picture. Ladies, I love it. It's good to know. Hey, uh, everybody wants to know about your latest viral stunt. Was a uh, smoking f yeah, cop weed in front so of the cops. Yeah, that was a fair kind video. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. But uh, a lot of people got tricked, huh? Yeah. Well, I, like I wasn't really trying to. Yeah. Say like, oh, I'm smoking. Like that's what people would think. Like, oh, I'm just smoking in front of twelve. Like I just was. That's being just funny. trolling. That's yeah, I was fun. Being fun funny to try to fuck with people. Yeah. Like, yeah, like haha, you believe this? Like people. Like that's my like. 
that's like me coming out my shell, really, like saying like, okay, me being a rapper is not so bad. Like I felt corny doing it. It was like, okay, well this shit is actually cool. No, like, I loved it. I kind of knew what it was when I saw it, and I was like, damn, I wish I fucking got a chance to do that. that was, that's a I great thought it was idea, real yeah. for a second. I was like, oh, it must be like a place where it's legal to smoke. You know, like he must yeah. be in like Denver or something. Yeah. yeah, but I was thinking like the kind of cops in Long Beach and LA and shit. They definitely are not going to be laughing yeah, the, about the a car guy gives like him. away though. The yeah. car, the old car. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And okay, then yeah. also like the nigga who. With the beard who was like talking to me, like he's in wedding, wedding singer and all type of oh, movies. Okay. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, if you really watch movies, you know, yeah. I thought I had more beef tweets uh, screenshot here, but I guess not. Maybe I uh, it up. Yeah, that phone case is pretty dope. You like that? I got it at uh, Hennessy at Southwest Southwest. Some guy just handed it to me. I was like, I'm going to rock this. I see you lit one time. You're the richest nigga, but take all the free shit. I should be getting paid for no, this, right? No racks. No racks. Like you're, you're like uh, your bank account is mighty like wealthy right now. Oh, he's man. a hermit. I don't know about that. He's a hermit. You're the, the one with a store. You got Seven a forty-five thousand dollars chain on. What the fuck's that? I ain't yeah, got you got M six, man. No, you got no, M six. Right, no, my chain, that chain's at my mom's house. What'd you say? Yeah, M six. M six. All this shit. Yeah, I worked Car's hard. Cars a piece that. of shit. I don't know nothing about all that. Yeah, because you're a hermit. You're a saver. Because <laughs> I'm white person rich. He sleeps on his money, and <laughs> yeah. that's it. Doesn't spend it. Smart. Yeah. They get money, don't spend it. I don't go out and buy chains. I can't do that, man. I look crazy. I asked this girl if I should get a. If I should get a, a grill And she said no Nah no grill Them shit Fuck nah. your whole image up You should get, your, get an awesome shit chain though Or a no jumper chain I'm yeah, gonna get man. robbed though You know I'm gonna get robbed no, Probably no, by no. one of your friends Just call me <laughs> <laughs> You get it back yeah, for me yeah. Hey what's up with this anyway You, you roll with a, a gun everywhere you go Or what yeah, Everywhere I go man I ain't touched one of these In a fucking hundred years Jeez, I hold right. my own man You yeah. I, I like to fight But just in case that. Niggas like to jump Niggas you know Yeah Yeah. But so you're the dude Who's like You got fucking Everybody trying to fight you on Twitter and all this shit. Who's this one dude that you're supposed to swear with bring in Texas? This fuck, Texas I'm not going to even say his name because that's in fucked Florida, up. He's Florida, but do yeah. not bring this guy name. Like, he's a troll, bro. Okay. Like, he's literally a troll. Like, literally some scrawny-ass kid who's behind him. Like, he's he's funny. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong. He's funny, but I'm not even going to feed him. I don't even want to mention his name right now yeah. because he, like, low-key got clout from doing that on Twitter. That's what I'm saying. Like, how are motherfuckers out here getting, like, hundreds of retweets from just saying, oh, I'm going to fight you? Because, like, like certain niggas like, like me, like, when you did respond, that. Yeah. Yeah, when I, when he did that, I didn't know proper Twitter etiquette. Like, you know what I mean? I didn't right. know, like, yo, you just got to let them niggas pass. Like, I was like, yo, where the fuck you at? That's where you see the DM, like, he posted and shit. Like, I was, like, trying to link up and shit. I haven't been to Florida yet, though, but I'm definitely going to whip his ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's crazy, though. Just, like, in being a rapper, man, there's always going to be these kids who are trying to square up with you on fucking Twitter. It's shit, I'm, I'm, I like fighting, bro. Yeah? And if you're too big, I'm going to shoot your shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know. That's an insurance policy right there. Who else you had you had squabbles with online that we need to talk about? I can't even remember, man. Man, uh, we don't need more. to talk about no online squabbling. No, <laughs> just keep it to the real shit. No, you can talk. Who you want to talk about? I forget, man. I can't remember who all these. I ain't really had no are. online beef with people like that. No, no, just little kids and randoms like that who yeah. fucking try to talk shit. Yeah, just little troll kids. I get ooh, some kid. I got him good. Some kid trolled me the other day, but I said fuck your mom and all your dead family. Oh, he was Oof. so mad. He was so upset. I said, what? I'm trolling. <laughs> <laughs> you trolling, right? I don't know nothing about you. I'm trolling back. <laughs> he was hot, though. Fuck you, you bitch-ass nigga. When I see you, I'm going to kill you. I said, okay. <laughs> I'm trolling. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, shit. Is there anything else we should uh, touch on here? We're about the hour mark. I'm excited for that new tape coming out. Yo, I appreciate it. You yo. gonna tour? Yeah, I go on tour in June. Uh, yeah, yo, yeah. No jumpers popping. I definitely got to get this on here. Tour in June. Be there We were posting the flyers and stuff Because we are trying to stay on good terms now. People don't know Me and him had a little argument in the DMs Yo, you were a dickhead What happened? What happened? <laughs> he started the whole thing Basically, he's just like me, though Trying to stick his neck out for Wolf For my friend, yeah Yeah, but he did it a bitch way, though Just being honest Okay yeah. Yeah. I don't even remember He what tweeted what about me instead of DMing me oh, What'd I say, though? It was some sucker shit. I can't remember. Yo, I never heard. I never heard no, that it's Joey Fats kid music. Like you, you shit it on me. But okay, this is the thing: is that I've realized like I can't ever get into beef like for a rapper who's my friend. You know, like yeah. I gotta ignore all that shit because it's like in this position that I'm in, I can't be running around like I'm Xavier Wolf's homeboy. You know, nah, it's like I, I am his homeboy, but I'm, I can't be getting in on him arguing. It's with people, not, you know? not even necessarily that. If it don't involve you, bro, just exactly. blow it off. Stay out of it, yeah, you're right. Like, like I if he needs your help, he'll call you. If somebody's on Twitter saying your name, then you already won. Yeah. Because they're talking about well, you. I you don't won, gotta, Adam. Yeah. You don't got to acknowledge <laughs> Well, now him. we're on the podcast, so we're winning together. Yeah, definitely. That's what's cool. We can make each other hot. Like, why are you calling no jumper, though? Like, do you actually have no jumper? Uh, most likely, yeah, I have no jumper. But also, uh, 95 Air Max, because I'm a dope runner, balling like an athlete, but got no jumper. So...
Gucci Gucci name this for us, and that's why he's yeah. gonna he's gonna give us his first interview after he gets out of jail. Coach K, I'm looking at you. Tweet at Coach K and say that Gucci needs his first interview with us. Coach K, is fuck the man. Breakfast yeah. Club. They ain't hot. Gucci We're man. hot. No, nah, no jumper is definitely store. like my man Mario was telling me like no jumper is shit like yeah. like no jump like I've been New Yorkers and shit but like I said I don't be on anything like that. Well, I'm hyped because because you know we ain't had enough like long. Well, we had Antoine Dixon. That's a good one from Long Beach, but you know I want to connect with the you every think hood. Yo, Vince, Vince is gonna come. Vince is gonna come, but he was in San Francisco. He's gonna be hilarious. Only if I usher it though. Yeah, yeah, do yeah. That. Come with you, Vince. Then we can bring Vince. Back. Nah, yeah. I don't want to do it with Vince because no? I was already on here, but I definitely will try to get him in here. That's Thank like you. my goal because he I mean, like I take like a co-host because you're just like a funny dude in that role. You you don't have to talk about yourself. You can just be funny and make fun of him and get him to say shit. Vince is funny, bro, but he's like he he said he hates your interviews. He does. Yeah. Damn, that hurts. Vince Staples, what the fuck? I'm looking right at you right now. Yeah. <laughs> just let him. Come. We'll just let him talk. We won't even say. Anything. I don't know if he's ever done like a 45 minute hour long podcast type interview. He does mad interviews. He's anti social, bro. No, his uh, what's so it? His, his no. Hold on, T did, bro. T- do you know? But that's not Vince in them interviews, bro. Like <laughs> you gotta know. But like when you see Vince, you can be like, okay, this uh-huh. is not the Vince I know from Complex Interview. Like you go see it, like. The Vince you want is like you go have to actually know him. Like like he like when he when he takes him when I text him, he was like, uh, I was like, yo, come to no jumper with me. He's like, yo, I'm in San Francisco. He was like, but I think he was joking though. He was like, yo, I don't like his interviews. Mm-hmm. He was like, but that's just how he is. So like he jokes shit like that. But he was like, nah, I like him. I was like, nah, I was like, don't say that. I was like, don't say that, bro. He's cool. He was like, nah. He was like, he's cool. I wasn't talking about the Twitter shit. He's cool. So you didn't have to say that because you did not necessarily have to think I was cool since we were beefing in the DMs and everything. No, I actually thought, no, I actually, when you did that, bro, I actually wanted to come here and slap the shit out of you because yeah. I actually thought you were cool. I didn't even know you were Xavier Wolf's homeboy. Right. I didn't know that. Like, I told you, I don't do enough research to right. find out that you're Xavier Wolf's fucking homeboy. Right. Like, I just, just as a coincidence, I'm like, oh, yeah, I know each other. Okay, Joey, I never heard of your music because Xavier Wolf's my best friend. <laughs> No, no, all that shit's water under the bridge. I just remember the one thing we really got to talk about. We got to talk about this laptop. Oh shit! (laughs) You might not want it, but we got a bitch. All right, so basically, the gist of the story is that her boy came on here. Her boy, a bitch. And he said that you and Vince Staples stole his laptop. What's your version? Her boy, a bitch. I ain't gonna say no names because I ain't no snitch. But he know who took his laptop. He's associated with me. I can't control my niggas, and my niggas can't control me. Ain't that what you keep saying? That's I can't control my niggas. And don't her boy be acting tough? And the nigga who stole it, he just a regular nigga. Like he ain't a, just a regular nigga, but like you know what I mean. Like he cool. Like he don't put, act like he just the biggest gang member. He's a gang member, but like he just a normal nigga. Everybody know the nigga too. Like right. You know what I'm saying? Like he know who took it. Uh huh. Yeah, you know I mean. So you don't appreciate him bringing your names up? He trying to get clout. Uh-huh. Like, he trying to get clout. You know, we them niggas. I know it. He trying to get clout. Vince is hot right now. You know what I mean? Even back then, that's when Vince was getting hot. Like, he kept throwing Vince's name in there. Like, we actually got his laptop back for him. Like, and, like, actually did him a favor. You know what I mean? And then, like, this dude is so scary. Look, <laughs> I see him in the hundreds, like... Because he calling me a thief, bro. Like that fucked up so much of my business. You like, seen him after that podcast? Uh, no, no. After the laptop after incident, the like, bro, okay. like this shit been going on for years. Like, okay. let's like even before like you started the podcast. Like he been running around telling people I stole the shit. Like this is not just something he tells a fucking podcast. Like he actually talks about us every fucking day. Like every day he wakes up, he actually tell everybody that story. Everybody significant in the industry he meets who he think can get him to the next. Like he go tell him about that fucking story. Like he feels that's a fucking moment. In his career I don't know But like uh, Cause he thought You're trying to like Get his beats or something Bro Nobody don't want them shit no, I, I wasn't make, about that bro, was I will, laptop, I will make beats right? Around that shit Look, yeah. I can make beats around I will I will Bro I rap better than he make beats And I make beats better Than he make beats He can't see me In no type of musical situation I will shit on her Boy in every way Them little trap beats That's easy bro Niggas did that In, in Lex Luger days bro Like yeah. We're on the bigger and better things now. We, but you got the laptop back for him. Yeah. And uh, he didn't show up because he was scared. Mike G actually showed up and got it because we made him show up to our hood. He's a bitch. Like I said, like he's scary. And then, I, like I said, I seen him in a hunter's warehouse like a, a year after. Um, I seen a nigga pass me by. Like his face in restaurant with mine. You know what I mean? That's how much of it ain't shit. You know what I mean? Nobody is. Like he's not a factor. He's no boast, no threat to me. So when I seen him, I'm just like, oh. Who's this guy? Okay, he rolled past me. But he knew it. Just noticed my face. So when I get inside the hunt, like, I go talk to Ben and Bobby. Like, I'm talking to him. But then I, like, thought about, like, hold on. That's that dude from that party who sat on his laptop. So I get back on the skateboard. I start skating towards him. So when I skate towards him, he got a rag over his whole face. I kid you not, the most funniest shit ever in my life, bro. Like, he got the rag over his whole face with glasses over the rag. <laughs> I'm just like, bro, like, he, I'm like, bro, you AG? I kid you not. 
My right hand, they got it. If God strike me down, you can. I mean, God can strike me down right now if I'm lying. I'm like, no, I'm not AG. I'm not AG with his face covered. I'm like, take off the fucking rack, bro. Take off the rack. You're like, I'm not AG. I'm not AG. And Ben and Bobby and them kicked me out the warehouse because I was about to whoop his ass, all type of shit. Made me leave so he can leave, like, all type of shit, bro. Like, he's Whoa. like, most of these, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, these niggas who you're bringing up are just really internet thugging. Like, we're our banks. Right. Heard boy AG Like the, Man I'm telling you Like how I many times I try to link up With this nigga And beat his ass Like This nigga don't want to fight He don't want to do nothing He just want to constantly Tell people I stole his laptop yeah. See If we didn't have a relationship And if We didn't get into it With each other And then became cool And you noticed I was cool It's just you Just judging from the next man's word Oh he's a thief I don't want him at my shop right. He probably steal my laptop So he's fucking up my business At the end of the day That's why I'm gonna slap him Like a bitch But yeah He's soft man Damn, well, shout out Hurt Boy. That was just... I don't shout out no fucking Hurt Boy. You go it's on these, no jumper. these rants no are jump- just torching people. <laughs> no jumper is too wavy for Hurt Boy. Uh, well, I appreciate being wavy at least. The last good. time you go get on no jumper, you bitch. Let me find out you're here. I will be outside. Oh, God. God. Let's keep the peace. Unity in the streets. Yeah, I know you're not talking. I seen that video. And you was holding the door open, I believe. I did not want to be there at that moment. That Your was horrible. Up. You looked like you were enjoying it. I was really. And they were like, oh, say you, say you, say you, say you to say fuck Wolf. You're like, oh, yeah, that's my friend. Say you to say it. <laughs> I didn't say want to be there, dude. It. You have no idea how uncomfortable that moment was. Say you to say it. I really thought somebody was going to get shot. You know how not built for gun I situations I am? I my all that back and forth. Mm-mm. I never, I never rolled around with a gun. Never had friends who had guns my whole life. All of a sudden, these dudes are just standing there screaming, "I got a, I got a gun, I got a gun." I'm like, "Oh my god, this is really about to happen right here, man." Yo, I'm gonna come clean. Just judging by your aura and your swag, you should fuck with Sponto and Born and Raised, bro. What's that? Uh, Born and Raised. Yeah, I fuck with them, yeah. yeah. Sponto is his shit. You okay. should fuck with him. I'll look into that. Let's talk. Yeah, I'll be wavy. Sponto is his shit. What do the people need to know about you? What's your shout outs? Your self shout outs? Your shout outs to your homies? What's good? Man. Free thump, you get what I'm saying? My brother be home in July. Free all my niggas, you get what I'm saying? Rest in peace, Lamborghini, you dig what I'm saying? Free all the guys, free Nick. His dumb ass went to jail like three days ago. Free all the homies, you dig what I'm saying? You can follow me at Joey Fats. Yeah, you know I mean, no jumper pop right now. Oh, and Marty, you said the bitch was on talking about no jumper, huh? It's a bitch. She bad. She want to fuck the host? Huh? That's totally fine. <laughs> 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 no matter what she looks like uh, Joey Fats Thank you very much For coming on I really feel like This is a thank big you. one For Long Beach A big one for Cutthroat A big one for Yams Rest in peace man What you was say A big one for No Jumper You got me fucked up Adam Big one for No Jumper too Huge Yeah no of jumper. course You heard that right Big one for everybody This you is amazing that. I'm the first one To get the big one for No Jumper Vince Staples I'll see you soon Yeah I'll see you soon I'll see you in the streets Vince <laughs> no, no, the podcast I'll see, you the t- I'll see you in the tweets, Vince <laughs> Thank you, Robesman Woo! Woo! Oh, yeah, that was fun You guys stay away, man Yeah, thank you, bro Appreciate that Thank you, brother I appreciate you No doubt, man Thank you